Hi, I'm Tyler Borgman, and this is my presentation, The Assassination of JFK. So first, I'm just going to start off with a little background information. So I want you to forget everything you know or you think, or you, think you know about the assassination of JFK. We're only focusing on one thing in my whole presentation, and that is the third shot. The, the shot that supposedly killed him, where he was hit in the back of the head, but for some reason his head still went backwards. So I'm going to attempt to recreate, if possible, that same head movement after the bullet hit. So procedure. So what I did is I created a giant protractor on a large grid of paper. I fired a BB gun from multiple angles including 20, 40, 60, 90, 120, 140, and 160 degree angles. So I then placed a golf tee at the end where all the angles met in the middle. A ball was then placed on top of the tee and I used the tee to hold the ball to simulate somewhat of a neck. Uh, because we know that head movement can be affected by a neck and the strength of a neck. So I measured the ball, the, I measured the angle the ball rolled to after it was shot off the tee. So my claim. My claim is that the angle that the bullet is shot from will result in the ball being measured at the same degree as the rifle. So here's my setup. So you can clearly see the 90 degree straight line. The other two are 180 degrees. I didn't use them, but I made the whole protractor so those two angles are just part of it. So here's my protractor. I use this to measure the angles I am shooting at. So I would line the rifle up with each of those angles and then shoot towards the point where they all meet and that's where the tee and the golf ball are. So here's my golf tee. I use this to try to recreate somewhat of a neck. Here's the ball. So I used a soft rubber ball so it would indent and absorb the BB, like a human head would when hit by a bullet. So here's the BB gun I used. I used a BB gun and a rubber ball because it's too expensive to use a 22 caliber rifle and a watermelon, which I originally wanted to do. So here's my data. So you can see each of the angles that the rifle is set at is, is in the section called rifle degrees. You can see it was put at a 20, a 40, a 60, 90, 120, 140, and 160 degrees, as I said earlier in my presentation. So I took three shots, and all three shots were very similar to the angle the rifle was fired from. For example, at 20 degrees, shot one was at 18 degrees, shot two was at 16 degrees, and shot three was actually exactly at 20 degrees. And that was super similar for every angle we, I measured. So here's the graph of all the shots. As you can see, it's a linear graph, and at each at the angle the rifle was shot from, the angle the ball rolled to is pretty much identical to, to each other. So here are the averages, averages of the shots. So 20 degrees, it was 18 degrees the ball rolled, 40 degrees, 40.6 degrees, 60 degrees, 60.6, 90, 89.6, 120, 121.3, 140, 139.6, and 160, 159 degrees. So you can tell that they are all super close together and super similar. So here's just the graph. The averages pretty much shows the same thing. The graph all the shots did. Uh, it's a linear pattern, and the degree the guns fire from and the degree the ball rolled off the tee is basically the same exact thing. Uh, maybe it degree or two off, but very close to each other. So I decided to retest. I thought there was a couple problems with my first testing. Mainly, the golf tee didn't act like a neck at all, honestly. Um, I thought I could come, out with, come up with a better uh, simulation for a neck than a golf tee. And I did think that I could make my measuring more accurate than measuring the degrees the ball ruled from the tee. So here's the spring. I use this spring to resemble more of a neck compared to a golf tee because it'll bend, it'll move, it'll sway much like a neck would. So I used a golf ball. I used a golf ball to signify the head of JFK. The wood with the angles. I used wood and drew the angles to make the testing more accurate. Um, I lined up 
the holes, the hole with the points that they all met in the middle, that's where I lined the, the spring and the golf ball up with. So I attached the golf ball to the spring. So I drilled a hole in the golf ball and stuck the end of the spring in it to attach them to each other so it resembles more of a neck connected to a head than a golf tee and a ball where the ball would just fall off. So, and finally, I had to use a golf club. I used a golf club because I did not have a BB gun to use in my secondary testing. I would have liked to use the BB gun, but during COVID-19, not everything can be how we want it to be. So I had to make an exception and use a golf club. So here's the new full setup. Although nothing could reduce human error completely, this setup is the closest I could get under these circumstances, obviously. So my new procedure, I will use a spring and connect a golf ball to the end of it. I will then put the full spring into a piece of wood that has angles on it also. This will help make my new test more accurate. Due to COVID-19, like I said before, I was not able to use a friend's BB gun. So I set off using a golf club and swinging with a similar force every time. And that was as close as I could get. So how did I measure the results? Well, first, I lined the club up with the testing angle on my paper protractor, much like I did with the barrel of the rifle on the protractor in the first test. I then hit the ball with the spring on it, and then when it would hit the wood the first time, I would mark where it hit the wood, and then I used another protractor to measure and get an exact measurement of the mark in between the angles of the wood. So just be more accurate than measuring where the ball rolled to after it was done. Here's a video of what I was, what I, of the testing I did. See, I tried to line the golf club up with that, that line as much as possible and then swing through. And then I would mark where it hit and then I would measure it with a protractor. So here are the chart of all the tests. So a 20 degree, 40 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, 120, 140, and 160. Those are the angles I lined the club up with and swung from. Uh, all the tests, just like their BB gun tests, were super close to the degrees that the club was swung from. Like for example, at 20 degrees, test one was 24, test two, 18, test three, 22. A couple degrees off, but pretty much spot on to 20 degrees. So here's the new graph. This is the new graph, uh, the angle the club is swung from versus the angle the golf ball hits the wood at. So you could see that 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 degrees, uh, all those were the angle the club is swung from and the angle the ball hit the wood at were pretty much identical to where the, the same angle that I swung the club from. So here's a chart of my averages. The angle of swing was 20, 40, 60, 90, 120, 140, 160. As I previously stated, all right, so the averages of contact where it first hit the wood were 21.3, 42.6, 62.6, 88.6, 120.3, 141.6, and 160.6, and maybe a degree or two off, but super close, and I thought this was super accurate. So here's the graph of the averages. It's a linear graph as the last three have been, or last four have been actually, and same thing, the angle the club was swung from versus the angle of first contact, uh, pretty much at the, the same degrees. So then I decided to do something else. I decided to do the angle of the first rebound chart. So the first rebound is when it hit, it would, it would be hit with the golf club, it would hit the wood, and then it would come back, and then it would stop, and then come back. At this stop right here, that was the first rebound, and I was measuring where the ball was at after that first rebound. So at 20 degrees, for example, it was 24, on the first test, the second test was 18, and the test three was 23. So it was super similar. It came back to almost the same point that it was swung from the first time. So there's the first rebound graph, and I base it was just the angle of first contact versus the angle of the first rebound. Um, again, like my other graphs, super similar to where it was swung from. Uh, so the angle of first contact 
where it hit and the angle of the first rebound are pretty much the same exact thing. So what does the rebound and graph chart show? All right, so I understand you may be confused with why I even did that, but I believe that shows that if his head got hit at a 45 degree angle, his head would whip back at the same angle the shot came from, which might be able to produce somewhat of an illusion that he got hit in the back of the head and his head still went backwards. So what does data show? Well, the data shows something very important, that the ball went in the direction opposite of how JFK's head moved after he was shot. So what's my final claim? My final claim is that when the ball or head is shot, it'll move in the same angle as the rifle was being fired from. Hence, if he got hit in the side of the head here, his head would go sideways. If he got hit in the back of the head, his head would continue to go forward, not get hit in the back of the head and go backwards like JFK's head did on that third shot. So from my conclusion, the data I collected, I think I can form the statement that the angle the bullet was shot from couldn't cause the head to move the way it did. Although other factors could have contributed to his head movement, the angle the bullet was shot from does not change it. Thank you. Any questions?